And there's a movie called Land of Bad. It's directed by William Eubank. He is the director of Love, The Signal. There's a paranormal activity movie that he directed, which Eric Holmes, who interviewed William Eubank this week, he referenced. I don't know if either Bruce or Eric have seen that and saw one of paranormal activity. He also directed Underwater, a movie that I believe both Eric and Bruce really enjoyed. I still have yet to see Underwater. Now, Land of Bad is, I think, could be considered, might be a, considered a departure for filmmaker William Eubank. It stars Liam Hemsworth. I believe he is a, yeah, he's a rookie officer who is joins a Delta Force team to conduct some kind of mission in a remote part of the world, in a jungle area. They drop down into this jungle, and he is pretty much an outsider among the crew. They're nice to him. They're nice enough to him. The crew includes... Actors Luke Hemsworth, Ricky Whittle, and Milo Ventimiglia. These are the people who help accompany him. He basically accompanies them on this trip. And there's someone else. I don't, they don't have the actor's name here right now. But just a, a, a Delta Force unit plus the Liam Hemsworth character. The thing is, they get ambushed and they are out in the jungle alone. The Liam Hemsworth character is separated from the group and he is on a mission to find a plane which will get him out of the jungle. Russell Crowe is an Air Force drone pilot who is attempting to help these soldiers get out of this area within a 48-hour time period. Interesting, Land of Bad is essentially two stories for the price of one. There is the drone pilot story, which is its own thing in that military area, and there's some comedy. There, and It's not... Siri, it's not lighthearted because they're in a very tragic situation, but there is some comedic moments among the drone pilot and his assistant and the people within the area. There's a whole situation about a television and people are watching the NCAA, NC2A basketball championships. I think it's probably March Madness. There's a little bit of an element to that. The actual element that drew me to Land of Bad was the story of that rookie officer, again, played by Liam Hemsworth. Is he able to survive within this 48-hour time period. Really enjoyed this movie. Thought it was a straight-ahead, solid action movie. Start off with you, Eric Holmes, your thoughts on Land of Bad. Yeah, I really like this one a lot, uh, especially um, I, I've compared it a lot to uh, Lone Survivor and uh, the movie Eye in the Sky. It's got a lot in common with Eye in the Sky. I don't think this is nearly as suspenseful as that because Eye in the Sky, you're, in the, you're basically the... Uh, was it Russell Crowe and uh, Chica Ikagwe? Um, okay. Blade Sergeant Nia. Uh, the two that are in the, uh, uh, you know, running the drones. Um, and I in the sky, they're pretty much in there the whole time looking at the the area they're searching on and, you know, giving intel on. Um, this one's not quite as uh, suspenseful as that, but I think it still works. And I think one thing that uh, this one does that eye in the sky doesn't is that you mentioned the comedic aspects of it but at the end of the day they're in a room basically i mean not to minimize it what they're doing but they're essentially playing a video game you know they're sitting in a chair doing the controllers they're not on the field like luke hemsworth characters so like when you have the scenes with uh or i'm sorry liam hemsworth when you have the scenes with liam hemsworth and like the the soldiers like you know taking fire and it's like all intense and then they cut back to the uh drone operators and someone pops their head in going hey i'm doing a starbucks run you guys want anything it's it's funny but also kind of illustrates the uh, inherent differences in what both teams are doing. Even though they're working together, they have completely different uh, contexts of what they're playing with. Um, I really like the the action parts of this, the the parts on the ground, um, you know, all the, the war stuff uh, is really intense. Um, and then all the, uh, and actually all the stuff in the uh, uh, drone room can get intense. Uh, because you know that you, you get uh you know uh the characters in there are intent on saving their soldiers meanwhile people outside of that room are just kind of doing random day-to-day -day things and kind of you know not taking things as seriously as they should uh but kind of makes sense at the same time because they're not in it so i i really like that dynamic of this and yeah this is a good one i think well bruce 
Um, I have a similar reaction too. I, I, you know, we've said it many times, almost every episode that I'm not an action guy. So a lot of times these lower budget or less big, this is probably a fairly large budget, budget, but not compared to like, I don't know, a top gun or something. But, um, a lot of the ones we get, I don't think the action is usually very good. Whereas I think the action here is, is really well staged and there's a variety of types of action, which is kind of refreshing. You know, you've got the, you know, trying to be stealthy and stay out of sight of the, the, you know, the bad guys in the jungle. You've got the, you know, trying to uh, achieve a mission and not get detected side of things. And then you've got another side of things in the third act. I'm not going to describe because that would give away like what goes down. Um, on the negative side, this has got the political, I guess, uh, complexity of a Top Gun movie. You know, the bad guys are foreign. They're bad. Uh, that's about almost all we see, except for people that they kill. And the Americans are good. And the drone operators are only hitting bad guys because there's no one else but bad guys around to hit unless it's a uh, friendly fire and they have to try to watch out for the good people and not hit them. I mean, it's it's that. Whereas I in the Sky, on the other hand, actually dealt with some of the really tricky, weird stuff that goes on with drone warfare, you know. But... This is not that kind of movie. This is the kind of movie where you kind of, this is a, I could sit text to my dad who maybe is more of a blue state guy or a red state guy. And I'm more of a blue state guy. And we could both enjoy this movie together and not have to argue very much because the lines are very clearly drawn and it's not realism. The action's pretty good. The Russell Crowe stuff is kind of unintentionally funny sometimes because it's sort of so goofy but I really do enjoy the Russell Crowe we're getting these days. Where this is the Pope's Exorcist Russell Crowe. This is the I'm just gonna put all the he's almost getting into Nick Cage territory where he's he's in movies that maybe sometimes are not asking him to do as much as he does. And what he does is sometimes bigger than it needs to be for the roles, but it's it's a lot of fun to watch, even if it tonally is a little bit odd sometimes um i really enjoyed it i i think that uh i'll hear what you say greg i think you hinted at some possible eye rolling moments at the end i mean at that point the outlandishness was here in this movie a little bit anyway so i just rolled with it um yeah i had a good time with this movie and there was bruce. really not, oh. not too much yeah eric oh I, I was gonna uh hop on a quick thing bruce said about russell crowe would you call him uncle crow He's got kind of a, a vuncular kind of a yeah. disposition in a lot of his newer movies. He kind of plays, um, oh, what was the character? The opposite. I can't, I remember in uh, Lethal Weapon movies, there's Riggs, but what's, what's... Danny Glover? Yeah, yeah, Danny Glover's character. What's his character? Is Oh, he, uh, I don't know. It's a Christmas movie. Yeah, anyway. Murtaugh. <laughs> he, he, Murtaugh, thank you. He kind of plays that in a little way. He's kind of like the, uh I've had enough of this stuff and oh gosh, you know, and he's like, it's almost like he's not ready to retire, but he's almost like, you know what? I'm just, I'm just putting in the time now. Can we just make this <laughs> can we be done? But yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's kind of fun to watch. Yeah. Atlanta bad was actually crafted by William Eubank. The co-writers, David Frigerio and per Eric's interview learned that it was written and finished as a screenplay or at least the idea or the execution of it all the way back to his days of, doing the sig uh, whoops of doing the signal eric did you ever get to finishing the signal no i no i didn't okay yeah i love the signal so yeah it's interesting so it's been circulating in his brain for about almost i think at least almost a decade so i, I think it's a very strong story my only many complaint is eric was mentioning about the stuff on the ground the stuff on the ground is way better than the Russell Crowe subplot stuff. And that's fine because you're supposed to actually be frustrated with what's going on in that department. And Russell Crowe is great to watch. It's more of a, it's more of sort of the mechanic of that subplot is supposed to frustrate you because there are people there that are actually screwing up the mission by just watching a basketball game. There's some weird dynamic there. So Actually, the stuff on the ground, I think, is intended to be a superior story to the Russell Crowe subplot. So overall, I didn't have a problem with it. It was just the obvious thing is the stuff that's action is the best part 
of Land of Bad. As far as the preposterous third act regarding the drone pilot and someone else, I'm not going to mention too much, but I, they should have ended it a little bit earlier. But again, it's a minor quibble. It's <laughs> I'm not saying I didn't want it there. I'm sure there are people who would like to have it there, but I'm neither here nor there on it. I, I really stuff. I really thought the action stuff was really well executed. I'm a big William Eubank fan. I definitely need to see Underwater. I lo- Again, like I said, I love the signal so much. Land of Bad, only in theaters, February 16th, four stars for me. What about you, Eric? Final thoughts? I do kind of agree that the, the some of the stuff in the, the drone room is kind of frustrating, but I also think it pays off at the end. There's a, there's a moment at the end where that doesn't pay off nearly as well if you're not frustrated with the stuff that Russell Crowe is dealing with. 100%. Um, and yeah, I I think uh, you know, uh Eye in the Sky and Lone Survivor, you know, two good movies. You put them together, you got Land of Bad, another good movie. I would probably go three and a half, four stars on this. I think four stars. Four stars for Eric Holmes. What about you, Bruce? I think I'm three and a half. I had a good time with it. Okay, so that is Land of Bad, again directed by William Eubank. But I want also want to mention uh, Milo Ventimiglia is very good as a leader of the Delta Force team. When you think of him, you think of what is that movie? The Art of Racing in the Rain, Gilmore Girls, and most recently, This Is Us? Is that the name of the, the show? And then he was also Rocky Balboa's son. You don't really oh, think of him in this role. I, that's the one I was going to bring. <laughs> that's the one you're, yeah. So he's very good in this movie. And also his the brother, Chris Hemsworth. He's good as one, one of the Delta Force team members as well. Just all around good movie. Three and a half from Bruce, four stars from me and Eric. 